Okay, it's here, the video that was heavily anticipated and yet nobody wanted. Anyway, why am I doing this? Basically, uh, because I can. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, also, because our Wi-Fi has been really bad and I just want to get rid of that horrible BT provided router access point combo thing. It is really bad, so I've replaced it with PFSense on the server. That also, hobby, um, and I will hopefully be going to the Barclay UTC College, um, and they teach this sort of thing, so this is basically what I'll be uh, doing for a long time. <laughs> um, this is my new server rack and networking cupboard, whatever you want to call it. So I've spent quite a lot of time, and then probably money as well, trying to get this to work and get it how I like. It's still not perfect, there's still a couple of little bits I would like to get, but for all intents and purposes it is fairly good. Um, yeah, so it's in our loft here, as you can see. Um, it took us probably about a week to install and get it all wired up because... I'll do a more detailed overview in a minute. Um, yeah. So basically this video is going to be in a couple of parts. So we're going to start off with an overview. Just going around, telling you what it is, what everything. Just like a very brief explanation. And then, uh, so if you're not that interested, you can watch that. Or if you want a bit more of a complicated setup, you can skip to this time. I'll put it on the screen, hopefully. Um, and then I'll go over a more detailed overview, sort of towards the end. Um, yes, so let's get on with that. Okay, overview. So this here is my server cabinet. Um, I don't know exactly how tall it is in terms of height. But let's open it up. So, starting from the top. So you've got loads of these blank plates, just to make it a bit more neater. And then this is the patch panel. So basically what this does is each one of these network connections here, or at least all of these ones up to this point, they're the only ones that are connected so far. The rest aren't connected. Um, they all go to different locations and different items around the house. So, for example, this one here, this is my sister's room for a PS3. All of those cables come down into this thingy here. This is a network switch. So you could think of this kind of like an extension lead. But instead of for power, it's for internet. So you've got loads of different ports. And then everything can come in and come out and it distributes it everywhere. So this is a 24 port one. You can see all the lights flashing on there. Then this is the PDU, so it sends that sense of power distribution unit, and it's also got a surge protector in actually. That's the wrong way around. <laughs> Just noted this, so that's I want to get a second one which would go here. Um, so that breaks power off to the entire cabinet. Um, I ha we don't have a UPS as well. I'll explain a bit more about that later. But when we get a UPS, I'll put a set one there, and there'll be one on the UPS, one not. Then you've got CCTV system here. Won't go too much into detail on that. This is a KMV, so it's, that stands for Keyboard Video Mouse. So it takes video and USB from the servers and it combines it into one. And then you can switch between the two. And then that goes to the monitor down there. Then moving down to on top of my main server, so I've got this little thing, which is a Wi-Fi thermometer and humidity sensor. So that lets me monitor the temperatures and see what everything's doing if I'm not here. So it's a little bit warm today. Then there's a little keyboard just for measuring things. And then, all right, this section here, this is my main server. So it's a Dell PowerEdge R710. So this is doing everything at the moment. So this has got PFSense running as a router. It's got file servers. It's got Plex going running home assistant for smart home stuff there's loads of stuff this is doing um, so it's got six SAS drives in it I think they're 500 gigs each something like that but this has got 1.5 terabytes raw total storage 
um, it's running Proxmox, and then I'll show you a video or a clip about that later. Then this one here, Dell PowerEdge 2950. This one is turned off at the moment. It doesn't stay on very much because it's very loud and draws a lot of current. But this has got, I think, five terabytes of storage in it, and then it acts as a backup for this. So this automatically turns on on Monday at 12 o'clock at lunchtime. And then there's a backup between the two. So this one fully backs up to this one. And then, um, yeah, it turns off again when it's finished. So that's all done automatically. I uh, don't have to do anything with that. Then, of course, you've got a monitor for the servers and the CCTV so you can see what you're doing. Right, I will take you round to the back now. We can talk a little bit about that. There's not a huge amount, but um, yeah. Okay, we're at the back of the cabinet now, so I'll start at the top. So this is just a mirror of what was already there. So this is the back of the patch panel. So each one of these little blocks is for one cable, one of those network ports. And then you can see all the cables. And inside one Ethernet cable, there's eight more conductors, as you can see there. So different colours. I might put a diagram up with that. This is just all the cables that go between the switch and the patch panel. They're just tucked back here neatly. Then you've got the back of the switch, nothing there. That's all the CCTV stuff. Then there's the back of the servers. This one's got four network ports. That one's used quite a lot. And then there's a management port as well. So this goes to a special thing which lets me uh, remote into the server and fully control it from anywhere else without needing to be up here, the keyboard and mouse. Then there's the second one. And there's an extension lead down there, because I don't have a second PDU. And then there'll be a UPS down here at some point. And you've got all the cables, so all of these here come out of the patch panel, they come down, go into the back of servers, and they also come out here, and then power is that grey one going in. And then that purple one is the one I mentioned a while ago. Um, it's my sister's room. Then all the other cables come out here. And they go around to various points in the house um, and do different things. This is an example of where some of those cables go. So there's just some dual network ports on this desk, which is very messy at the moment. So you can plug computers and things into there. We've also got a couple of these access points. So that also goes to the uh, patch panel upstairs. So that's what gives off the Wi-Fi. So there's two of them. There's one in the garage as well. Okay, now I'm going into a bit more detail of exactly what happens. Um, so yeah, building on from what, so this is the patch panel, so 84 ports, we're never going to fill all that, I'll be lucky if I can fill the top row, but um, yeah. So these are all the ports that are going in, so this here is like the WAN from downstairs, this is internet coming in, going into the server to be routed, and then here's it coming back out, then you've got all the main different things. And there's this switch here, so model number up there if you want. So it's 24 port. I think, yeah, 24 port. So you can see, let's see if I can get a better shot. No. There's, there's like a little bunch of lights on there, and they're all different colours. So this is a gigabit switch. So that's like the speed of it. Um, if the lights are yellow, it means it's not running at full speed. So whatever's plugged in on the other end cannot support gigabit that's why the lights are yellow whether these ones green that means it is full speed so that means gigabit running at full speed pdu nothing really special there it's got a surge protector in it if i need it and then these are all things that's the monitor there the servers that's cctv um that's the switch and then uh yeah there's not a huge amount to go over that I haven't already, but these servers, like I say, they're quite big. They go back quite deep. Um, so this one has got two 12-core processors and 32 gigs of RAM. And then we've already talked about storage, and so that's in like a RAID configuration. So yeah, it runs Proxmox, and it does all sorts. That's the main operating system, Proxmox. And then it does... Um, PFSense, which is a piece of software that acts as a router, um, or router if you prefer saying that, I'm router personally, but 
won't get into that discussion. Um, yeah. That's what that server does. That's its main purpose. However, it also runs um, TrueNAS, which has a Plex plugin. And so you have a file server and a Plex library for videos and music. Um, and then there's a Windows machine, which runs like Minecraft servers. Um, it does a bunch of stuff with automatic control of everything and then there's also a separate home assistant thingy which controls smart home stuff but i'll get into that a bit later maybe i might do a quick video and then the second one backup server that one is not very powerful it's only got two dual core cpus in it um, and they're quite old ones so it's a bit slow and it's very loud and not very power efficient so that's why it's turned off most of the time yeah so this is my server cabinet. So I will take you downstairs and I'll show you some more advanced things inside the actual software. So we've gone over hardware now and I will see you in a second. Also it's worth mentioning, I do store a lot of rubbish up the top and then there's some spare hard drives down here. I need to put one of these network cards in. So you have like an aerial port there. And then that way it can stream live TV over the internet. So there's a bunch of spare hard drives and bits there. Right. I will see you in a second. Okay, so now I'm just going to do a quick overview of the software sort of system side. So I've got a screen recorder right out to And as you will now be able to see, this is the um, management port of the server. So that's the thing I was talking about earlier. So this gives me loads of information and loads of control over the server. So it gives me critical information status here, um, and it gives me a bunch of information. It gives me some logs of what's happened, and I could eat this thing here. If I were to launch that, it would be as if I was at the server and I could log in and control it, because this is on my laptop now. So I don't instead of having to go up to the server and change it there, I could do it here. It makes it much better, and I can also do. Um, a bunch of things like uh, let's see okay if i go to fans for example i can see the rpm of all the fans and i know if they're going wrong same with the temperatures i can see all of that so currently it's a little bit warm and then uh this is proxmox this is everything uh this is the, this is the operating system as you can say so here this is the server here and then within that you've got these four vms home assistance currently not running so for example if i were to go to TrueNAS, you can see information like how much memory it's using and the cpu usage so it's not very much at the moment you can get loads of data on that and have control over it and like you can shut it down um i won't click on psn because you probably see the ip and then windows it's, it's a similar thing so this is the vm so this is the actual operating system so you could add more of these and each of the own things could do that they do their own thing so what a vm is or a virtual machine so this here is a vm so it's effectively having a computer running on a computer so just how like windows or mac os is an operating system these things here so this windows here is running in another operating system so it's a virtual machine that's why it's called vm um, so i've got the server is running multiple operating systems and it lets you do multiple things at a time so that's poxbox if i this is trunas this is the file server so you can see a bunch of data right here get ip addresses and then you can go got all the settings here so like you can go to sharing and you've got all of the information on what the shares are and you've got full control and then there's the pool so this is so this is uh, all of the different storage so the currently is about a terabyte allocated to storage which is just sort of barely enough this is pfsense so this is the router so i'm gonna have to blur out some bits here because you're not allowed to see them for security reasons but this is basically the router so it gives me loads of graphs and on what's going on with traffic and information about the system and then you've got loads of settings so like you've got loads at each one of these menus has got loads of stuff like that and it gives you so many more options than what um, is pr the thing that's provided by 
your ISP. Um, yes, so this this is the uh, PSN. This is the UPS I want, so it's quite expensive. So go away. Um, yeah. So this is the software on the server. There's not a huge amount to it. I mean, it can take a while to set up and get used to. But when it works, it works quite well.